Welcome to my channel. Let's get started with this tutorial. These are the supplies that you're going to need. So first you'll need stiff felt. You can see that when I'm handling it, it is very, very structured. That's important. And next you're going to need some green beads to make the cactus. This is a bead soup from Michaels. And then you'll need a metallic bead of some sort to make your pot. Finally, you're going to need some gold beads and we're going to use these to tack down these flower sequins. So I got these from a Dollarama. They come in a bunch of different colors. You're also going to need a beading needle. This is a size 12 extra hard needle from Michaels. You'll also need beading thread. This is Nymo size B and scissors. You'll also need a backing material. First thing we need to prep the pattern. So I use a hand drawn pattern and I just trace it onto my felt with a pen. You can also print it out. I have one attached in the description and you can just staple it on or trace it. So we're gonna grab thread. I'm gonna take about an arm's length. Then you will thread your needle. And what we're going to do is pull the thread all the way through, fold it in half, and we're going to knot one end. So the thread is just a single piece of thread for this project, not doubled. I do this just so it uses less thread. So we're gonna start with the flower pot. So I'm just sticking my needle through right on the corner of the flower pot. You can start on the left or the right side. And you can see my little knot is keeping it from pulling through. And now we're ready to start adding the beads. So I'm going to get enough beads so that I can go the full length across this little flower pot. And I think that's usually around 12 beads. So I'm just loading up my needle and then I will push them down and measure them out. So it looks like I don't have quite enough beads, so I'm gonna grab a couple more. I'm using my fingers to make sure that they're in place and pushing them towards the start of the thread so that there's no gaps. So now that I have a couple extra beads, I can place it. So I'm holding my thread tightly in my left hand to make sure that it is secure and taut. So I'm just gonna zoom in to show you exactly what I'm doing. So I've pushed them all over and I'm not gonna go right up against the beads. I'm gonna go just a tiny little sliver away from them, like a millimeter, like that. And I'm gonna keep this thread really tight. So this is the important part when it comes to tension. I'm using my left hand and my fingers, you can see to hold the thread down below and keep it really nice and tight. It's important that you keep it tight in this first process to make sure they lay flat. So now I'm going to work my way back to where I started and we're going to tack down between every two or three beads. So I'm going to push up through and you can see I'm going about three beads over. And then I'll just pull my needle through and I'm just going to pull this thread tight again to make sure we've maintained that tension. And then we can begin to tack. So I'm just gonna go down right up close to the beads so that my thread gets pulled and disappears between the two beads. Now when you pull this, you don't want it to be super tight. We've created that tension in all the process leading up to here and now we're just going to tack down lightly. If you tack down a little bit too hard, it might make your beads a little bit wonky. And because we're going and we're tacking multiple times, that's going to keep a good tension. So you don't have to absolutely pull on it. You can just keep it pretty light. So just keep repeating this process of tacking between the beads. I do every two or three, depending on where I think it needs to be tacked. If you're just getting started, I would recommend doing every two beads. And once you get more of the hang of it, I find every three beads is plenty of tacking like this okay now that we finished i'm going to come up right at the beginning where we started and i'm going to put my needle through all the beads i find this is really helpful when you're doing outlines just to make sure that it's all secure and it can help to correct any small mistakes okay and then now we're just going to tack that down so that is our first row so that's going to be the process we're going to repeat basically for the rest of this with a few modifications so the next step is we're going to create the sides of the flower pot. So I'm gonna come up right next to that last bead and I'm gonna use three beads to go down because I wanna fully cover this outline so you don't see the pen mark. 
So again, I'm keeping that tension and I'm placing it with my fingers, pushing them back. And then we're going to tack down one sliver away from the beads and pull through. Now, since we're only putting down three beads, I'm not going to tack these. Instead, we're just gonna go through and repeat the process of going through all the beads again. So we're gonna come up through the beginning of the beads and then we'll put our needle through. So since we're skipping the tacking, you really wanna make sure to keep this tight as you're doing this process like that and what I'm also going to do is put my thumb on top of the beads so that they don't get pulled up as I pull this thread through. Now this wouldn't be necessary if we were tacking down the beads but since there's only three it's not necessary to tack them down. And we'll go down through the beginning like this. Okay, and to make this symmetrical, I find it's easiest to do the sides and then the bottom. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna jump across to the other end. And one way you can do this is by sticking your needle just through a couple fibers like this. And that way it's just a little bit more secure and you don't have to worry about it pulling your felt and warping the felt. Okay, and now we're just gonna repeat that same process coming through next to the end of the beads, tacking down three beads and then going through all the beads. So I'll just speed this up so you can watch me do this without an in-depth explanation. So I chose this pattern because I find these shapes are easiest to work with, either straight lines or circles, as opposed to leaf or diamond shapes that are more narrow. So we're going to repeat this one more time. So we're going to grab our beads, tack them down, and then tack between the beads. So you can see here, I've grabbed one too many beads. It's making the flower pot look wonky. So we're just going to remove a bead. To do this, you're just going to stick your needle back through and pull the bead off the thread. So when in doubt, it's important that you don't put too many beads. If you're ever concerned is this enough or is it too many just take one off because you can always add one later but you can't take one away very easily and you're going to get the most flat bead work if it's not too crowded so that's better and we can go through and tack it down so if you aren't already subscribed to my channel I ask if you could please subscribe it really helps me out as well as if you could give this video a thumbs up if you like it, that would be great. And if you have any feedback on my tutorials or if there are any tutorials you would like me to do, please comment them below. So once we're done with this outline, we're gonna start uh, filling in the flower pot and then we will move on to the cactus. So as you go through, I'm hoping that you're catching on and you kind of get the pattern and you're getting a hang of the tension because filling in is basically the same process. It's just gonna be a little bit more important that we're paying attention to how many beads are going to fit in here and we're not overcrowding. So I'm just gonna come up next to the bead and we're gonna start by filling the bottom section. So again, I'm gonna grab enough beads to go all the way across. Because this is a small piece, I feel like we can do that. If it were something bigger, then you would probably just wanna go six to eight beads at a time depending on what you're comfortable with. So you can see here, that looks like it's enough. It looks like it could be a little bit um, short, but it's better if we go with less than more. So like that, so I'm just using my fingers, I'm rolling the beads towards the outline and I'm using the outline as a structure to get my beads straight. So we're gonna go through and tack them all down. So filling in can be a little bit easier because you do have that base to work with, which is really nice, like that. So because we're doing a fill-in, I'm going to skip going through the beads after. We're just going to go through and tack between the beads. I find it's you don't necessarily have to do that when you're filling. It's more important to do it on the outline. So there we go. So you can see I have room for one more bead. So another important tip is when you're working with check beads especially, try to find some of the little skinny ones because they're not always perfect. And the same, you wanna try and find a couple little guys. So you can see the one on the right here 
is much smaller than the one on the left. So I'm going to use that one because he's going to fill that gap much better than a big one and make sure my work is flat. So whenever I'm going through my beads, sometimes I'll find one that is a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger than the rest. And I put those ones aside so I can pull them and use them in times like this when I need one that isn't quite as big as the rest of them to fit. Yeah, so that's one nice thing about check beads is because of the inconsistencies, it's actually really beneficial when you're doing flat beading or bead embroidery as opposed to if you're doing bead weaving or loom work or anything like that, that requires a lot more consistency. Okay, let's get started with the cactus. So you can see what it looks like in the back so far, but that's okay, we'll cover that in the finishing step. So I'm gonna come up right on my pen line and we're going to grab some of our beads. So this is a bead soup mix I got from Michaels. So it's a bunch of different beads all in shades of green um, to make it a little more interesting. You can use any color you want for this. I just really like these ones for these little guys. So again, I'm pushing it with my finger and then to create the circle, I'm gonna use my other finger to push and create the shape to make sure I've set my beads at the right spot. So I'm laying down about eight beads. If you want, you can go a little bit less with this because of the circular shape. But I find just pushing it with your thumb can get it in the right spot. So again, I'm gonna use my thumbnail to just push it into the place where I want it to be using the curve of my nail. And then I'm going to tack between the beads. So again, every two or three beads, uh, depending on where you are on the curve of the circle, you might have to tack them more close together like every other bead or you might have to tack them you might only need to tack them further apart like every three beads in other sections so you can see I have a knot back here so just carefully pull it apart and pull it through you don't want a bunch of excess in the back because uh, this is a very small project and it's harder to hide extra thread than it is with a big project okay and because we're doing an outline I'm gonna go through all these beads with my thread one more time. So we're just going to work in small sections to do the circle, just because it is obviously a lot longer line than the ones we worked with on the flower pot. So again, I'm going to grab a bunch of beads and load them up onto my needle and tack them down. So I'm holding my thread tight with my left hand, and then I am estimating where to tack it down. So you'll get more of a feel the more that you bead how exactly to tack it down. It is something that's going to come with some practice, but these tips I find will help it out using your fingers like I am to hold it in place. And if you do mess up, you can also just take your needle off of the thread and then go back and just pull the threads out like each of the tacking spots and the very beginning, and you can always just redo that section. And because I'm going around a curve, I couldn't push my needle all the way through, so I pulled it through four beads and then pushed it through the next four beads. Okay, and now we're just gonna keep repeating this until we get all the way around the outline. So it's important that you get your outline the way that you want it, because once it is set in place, the rest of your, uh, filling is going to follow that line. So now for the last section, I'll load up a couple beads and I think I grabbed one too many. So I'll just pop that last one off, take it off with my needle and make it fit. So again, because we're going back, we don't want to put too many or it can mess up the shape. So that's another important reason why you should always go with less instead of more, because once you start trying to fit a bunch in, you might overflow the project and then you're going to have beads that are getting pushed up. So your beadwork isn't flat or it could push out your outline and then you're going to lose the shape that you created. There we go. So now we can go through and start doing the filling. So very similar to doing the flower pot, we're just going to come up and go next to the beads. So I'm going about a half a bead over. 
just so it isn't too tight. Make sure to give yourself space. If you find there's too much of a gap, then you can just go back down through the felt and come up again a little bit closer. There's always room to go through and correct, so if you're not happy, just take it out and fix it. So you can see here, I'm using my thumb and I'm pushing it up against that outline. I'm rolling the beads and getting them so they're nice and close. So once we have this outline, working on the intersections is a lot easier. So I'm going to use my thumb and I could either hold the beads in place with the palm of my thumb or I can use my nail to push it over. I'm finding that just putting my thumb on top of the beads is working nicely. So I'm coming up on the inside and then tacking towards the outline. I find this a good way to just get it up and close against that outline so there's no gaps between one row to the next like that and again we're going to skip going through and putting our thread through the whole section instead I'm just going to jump to the end of the beads so you can see I'm just going to go to maybe the last two and I'm going to stick my needle through the last two beads to continue this line so you want to do this just so that you keep it in line with those other beads by going through the bead versus if you were to go down and then come up and guess you're more likely to get a gap that way so we're just going to add some more beads like this so you don't have to do as many as I'm doing I've made like 50 pairs of these earrings so I've gotten a lot better so once we've done that a few times now we're at the center uh, we're going to fill it in so you can see there's a small gap at the base of the cactus that my beads didn't quite fill so again, we're gonna look for one of those little beads that is much smaller than the rest of them, and I'm gonna use that to fill in that gap. Like that, so I've got a little guy, and I'm gonna put this one in the opposite direction. So most of the beads, you can see, are going the other way. I'm putting this one in sideways. So he, he fills in the gap. And you can see my thread is twisted, so I'm gonna use my needle and get the thread in the right place. So you can see now it's going up and down and then pull it through. Sometimes it'll get a little bit twisted and you just can use your needle to correct. Now I'm pulling it tight and then I'm going to push it in place with my nail. See that guy fits perfectly. There we go. Now we can fill in this final circle. So I'm just going to come up near that new one I put. And we're going to grab a couple beads. Uh, for this, I'm going to grab enough beads to do the whole circle shape. So I'm probably grabbing around seven beads like this. And then I'm using my finger to hold the, the beads in place and directing the thread so it creates a little circular shape like this. So it looks like I have it filled in. There might be a gap, but I can always fill that in after. So I'm going to tack down. So the main thing is you want to make sure that your space is filled, but not overcrowded. And then we can go through and just tack these beads where we want them to sit. There we go. So now we can go through and tack them. So for this final section, I'm going to tack every bead just because I'm creating this very tight angled circle. So I need to tack more frequently than I do when I'm creating a uh, less angular shape, like a straight line or like the larger circle we did on the outline. And there we go. So you can see there's a little bit of a white space right there. So I am going to fill that in with an extra bead. And same idea with that other little bead we put in. We're just going to put it in sideways so it fills that gap. When you look at most of these beads, they're not a perfect circle. They're more of an oval. They're more wide and short. So putting them in sideways is a good way to fill in a narrow section versus putting it up and down where it's too wide and not tall enough. So make sure to use your beads and just put them in whatever way is gonna fit best for them, like that. There we go. So ideally, if you were making sure that your beads were spaced properly, your beadwork should look nice and flat like this. If this is your first project, don't worry if it's not this flat. Uh, my first projects were definitely not that flat, and you will get better. So there we go. 
this is our little cactus. You could stop here or you could add the sequin flowers. So I'm going to use the little flowers to make it look like this one. And I like to put them on opposite sides so that your earrings are mirrored like these ones here. So we're going to grab our sequin flowers and the gold beads that I mentioned at the beginning. So I'm using gold just because they match the red flowers that have the gold kind of uh, shade to them. So now I'm just going to come up to where I want my flower to be. I'm just going to jump across. It wasn't very far. And so I'm going to stick my sequin flower and you'll see I'll push it down so that's where I want it. And then we're going to grab the gold bead. So we're using this bead to secure this because the only other way I could secure this flower would be going over the edge and then you would see all the thread. So now I'm taking my gold bead, I'm going to put it down, and what I'm going to do is I'm only going to go through the sequin. I'm not going to go through that gold bead because then it'll just fall off. I'm going to use um, the gold bead as a stopper. So I'm just going right through where I came like that, and you see now it holds down the sequin. The sequin still has a little bit of movement, so I'm going to go through and tack it one more time. I find doing it twice makes it way more secure. Um, and twice is completely sufficient. So I'm just coming up through the sequin and then I'm going to push my needle through the gold bead like this and then back down through the sequin and the felt. And then we have a secured flower. So I find the flowers make a big difference and it's really cute. So again, I got these at a Dollarama. It's like a big dollar store uh, in Western Canada. You might be able to find this similar ones at other craft stores, maybe Michael's or Joann's or general fabric and craft stores. And then we're going to do that one more time for our second flower. Just keeping it nice and secure. These are also cool because it adds a 3D element to it, which makes them fairly interesting. Okay, so now we are all done with our flap beading. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a knot and cut off our thread. So I'm going to go through just a little bit of the felt, just a very small, like a millimeter, push my needle through, and then I'm going to take my thread and wrap it around the needle to create a knot. And pull it tight like this. And we're going to do a second knot just in case. Same thing, go through a little bit of felt and then wrap your thread around the needle to knot it. So because I grabbed an arm's length and we're working with a small project, I didn't have to switch out my thread. You might have to do that with larger projects or if you didn't grab quite enough thread, but you would just do the same thing that we did in the beginning. Um, you'd tie your knot and then get a new thread, not the end, and go ahead. So now we're going to cut it out so we can edge it. You can see kind of what it's going to look like with that excess white on the outside. So I'm going to chop it, and you can see because I'm leaving a little gap, I don't have to worry about cutting any of my threads by accident. So I find that just keeping a little bit of white on the fine edge is fine for keeping it nice and secure. Um, and I also like it because then we're going to use the white beads, and using this white outline really helps the earring stand out against your hair. Um, and creates a lot of contrast, which is nice. And then I'm just going to create the little notches that kind of follow the flower pot. Uh, another trick you can use is a lighter to gently melt the edge. This way you could get it a lot closer to your beading without worrying about cutting your thread by accident. It can also help to clean up any little fluff. So now we're going to take our backing. This is a leatherette material from Sunday Lace Creations in the gold glitter. I'm just going to flip it over and stick my little cactus on here and just try to find the best way for it to fit so I can utilize all of this material like that. And once I have kind of enough, I'm just going to cut it out roughly so that we can go ahead and glue it like that. And now I have a little piece. So we're going to grab E6000 glue. You can also use Gorilla Glue, I think some people will use. Um, I like E6000, it has the consistency of a hot glue, but it's just in a tube. 
so it's a little bit easier to work with. And I'm going to leave a section around where we are going to do our edge beading because if I put the glue all the way to the edge, once it dries, your needle is gonna have a really hard time penetrating through the felt. So like that, I'm just going to do basically the middle and leave you know, a, a few millimeters around the edge so I have room to do my finishing. And we're just going to glue this down. So for these earrings, um, we're going to attach a hook and they will be dangle earrings. If you wanted to have a stud, or a latch back or something like that, you would want to glue that onto your felt and then put it between the felt and the backing. But these ones are so small and light, I find that they are um, really great with some earring hooks because they don't weigh down on your ear. And then you have room if you have any second piercings or things like that. There we go. So now we're going to do our finishing. So we're going to get our needle and thread with either leftover thread or you're gonna grab another arm's length. And I'm gonna go between the layers and through the felt to get started. This way I can push my knot down between the layers so you don't see it. And we're going to go ahead with our white beads. So for our first uh, section, we're going to grab three beads and I'm gonna go around through to the vinyl like this and push it through both layers. And I'm not gonna go in the beads, I'm just gonna stay outside of the beads, like outside of the cactus. And pull it tight like that so it kind of wraps around. And then we're gonna stick our needle through the third bead, through our last bead like that and pull it tight. So you can see it starts to rotate the, the beads so that they create a little loop this is called the two bead loop. So from the rest of this, we're going to take two beads at a time. Like that and repeat the process. So I'm gonna go through the backing and the felt and come through like so, pull it nice and tight and then go through our third bead, our second bead, sorry, and pull it tight. So it's really important that you keep this nice and tight so that your beads hold this structure and they don't flop around. So again, two more beads, go through both layers, pull it tight, and then go through that second bead and pull it tight. And you'll see the loop that it's creating like this. Now this creates kind of a little ruffly edge like this. This is one of my favorite edge techniques to work with because it is pretty quick and it has a really pretty finish. So we're just gonna keep repeating this as we go all the way around. So once I get to the corner, it's important that you pivot your beads to get around this corner. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab two beads and I'm just gonna go through that hole I just created with the last two beads again, and then come through that second bead. So this way my beads will go around without kind of missing the corner. You can see like that. So when you go around a corner like this, it's important that you keep your beads closer together because they are going a further distance, right? So now that we've gotten back to the beginning, I'm gonna use my fingers just to push the first beads into place. And once I am about one bead length away, we're going to grab one bead to finish it off. So I'm gonna go through that first bead I laid of the three of them. And I'm just gonna go through the bead and then I'll go through the felt. I find this is a little bit easier than trying to do both at once. Through the felt and the backing like this, and then you can see it's pushed forward, so now we need to bring it back. So I'm gonna go up through the bead, from the bottom through the top, and pull it tight, and this is gonna pull it in place so now it is seamless with the rest of the backing, like that. So now to attach our hook, I'm gonna create a little loop in addition to these little loops. 
so we have somewhere to hook the earring onto. So I'm going to just come up through the bead kind of like I'm following um, the beads that I've already laid. So I'm going through and then down and then I'm going to go through the felt and the backing. So I'm doing this kind of as a stabilizer, as kind of not like a knot, but just as an anchor. And then we're going to come up through the beads. So the idea is that I'm weaving to get into the space where I can now add one to the middle of the cactus. If that makes sense, like this. Because I want to create this loop off the top beads. So now So now that I've worked around to where I want to be, you can see now I'm in the center. I'm going to grab two beads and I'm going to put them through to the next upper bead. Like this, creating a little circle, a little loop that we can then attach our needle to. So you can kind of see it looks a little sloppy at the moment, but we're going to correct it. So again, I'm going to go down through the base bead and then through both the layers creating another anchor point like this and then coming back up through. So I'm going to go up through that bead and then through our little loop up here. So pulling through and you can see it's getting a better shape now and then going down through those beads like that. And in this case, I'm just pushing it through the backing. Okay, so now we're going to tie this off because we are all done. So I'm just putting my needle underneath the thread that's looping the beads on, wrapping my thread around the needle and pulling it tight. So again, you can see if you look closely, I'm putting my needle underneath the little threads and then wrapping it like this. So we're doing a double knot to secure it. And then I'm just going to put my needle through the base bead again. And this way, when I pull the thread, the knots that I've created will disappear a little bit underneath that bead. Like that. And that is all done with our edge. So now I'm just going to trim off the excess with my scissors. There we go. And you can also use a lighter to burn this and create a blunt edge. Just be careful not to melt any of your other thread like that. So now you can see there is our little loop and there is our finished edge. So we're all ready to add on an earring hook. These are sterling silver earring hooks I got from Amazon. Uh, they're quite easy to work with. So I'm just going to grab my pliers and I'm going to twist the little circle to the side so that I can put my uh, it around the loop like that. So I also do that double effect with the loop because I find that is a little bit more secure. If you just have one thread holding it on, obviously that's not as secure as if you have two threads that are going to hold it on this earring hook. There you go, and that's the finished piece. I really hope that you like this tutorial. Thank you so much for coming to my channel and watching my video. If you're still here, I really appreciate you watching this all the way through. And please go ahead and like and subscribe if you haven't already. And leave any comments on feedback or any tutorials you'd like to see. Happy beading!